Blog Talk Radio. Can you? Mega Man Radio Network. We're doing a live program. I'm overseas right now, and I'm tied into the network via Skype. And uh, praise God for Skype, or we might not be doing this program tonight. Uh, <laughs> this is a live program, though, and uh, glad to be back with you. I hope everybody had a great Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year. And we've got a great program lined up for you tonight. Uh, second and third hour, we'll be opening up the lines if you need prayer. Uh, the number is going to be 917 917- 889-2745, or toll-free 877-806-2482. Uh, I have no stereo stream running tonight, so make sure that uh, you're tuning in via the Blog Talk Network until further notice. Uh, no way to hook that thing up right now, so uh, we are going on Blog Talk tonight, live chat, and so forth. Well, without further ado, let's get Dr. Pat on. Dr. Pat, how are you tonight? I'm doing great. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. We miss you over here in the States. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> with this connection, it sounds like you're right next door. So, Yes, it's very clear. It's as clear as ever. Sure is. Yes, thank God for it. You know, we give him the glory. Amen. I think that we're living in this time just before our Lord is going to return. And uh, what these radio programs in my opinion, are all about is to get people prepared for the coming of the Lord. In so many instances, people are just not prepared for what's coming ahead, and it's coming very, very quickly. It's like a train coming down a mountain at this time, 
And everywhere you look, there's signs in the air. There's signs in the weather. There's signs in America. There's signs in the church. Every time you turn around, you see signs that are, are talked about in the book of Revelation and, and Daniel. And uh, many Christians uh, are still into this um, American dream mode is what I call it, where they are just looking for what God is going to do for them, their families, which I look at it too. I'm concerned about him bringing my family into the kingdom mostly, you know. But they, they just look, well, you know, am I going to get a new car this year? Is my mortgage going to be paid? And all these are, are things that people need to be worried about or concerned, not worried, but concerned about for sure. But it, it cannot take dominion over their spiritual life. And that's what I'm seeing. People are running, running running after things, after their jobs, after whatever is uh, in the material realms. And Jesus has sort of been put aside on the shelf. And so as we talk to you, you, we're not on this radio program, Shannon and I are not anyway, for the purpose of uh, of uh, debate, of causing people to get angry, uh thinking that we're out there to try to attack uh, Christians and to uh, say nasty things about. That's not my purpose. My only purpose is this, uh, Shannon, is that I know that there is a grave falling away as I speak to you. And the Lord, for the last several years, since uh, 2007, when Todd Bentley came into the state is when it started. He's had me to uncover uh, the fallen away church, and it's huge. It's it's bigger than I could ever um, imagined. And what it's about is to just say that the Bible says in First uh, Corinthians, it it says. Uh, that they will teach another Jesus, another gospel, by another spirit. Yes. And that's what we're looking at. We're looking at people teaching under the anointing of a spirit that that uh, um, apes or imitates the Holy Ghost. And that spirit is called Kundalini. But when you see the true Holy Ghost manifestations and you put them side by side with that spirit, they look different. They don't manifest the same way. And then if you take the Kundalini religious spirit and you go up on YouTube and you find a um, – put Kundalini in there and you find um, a counterfeit – uh, and there's a comparison. There's several YouTubes about this, and it shows you the Christians manifesting under the powers of this Kalini spirit, and then it shows you the manifestations from uh, the people manifesting Kundalini under their gurus, and they're exactly the same. Sure. So it, it's a Eastern religious spirit. That is not real, and it has swept through the Church of America. It swept through the Church of God in many instances. It swept through the assemblies, uh, all of the various or many of the various charismatic churches. And now we're at a place where God wants to call people into his presence and into his church. And he's saying, come out of her, my people. Amen. And and I know when you and I, you you and I used to go to the same dom- denomination many years ago. Yes. But I know that they would teach on the uh, end time church and it was all the Catholics. I mean, you know, it was the Pope and it was the Catholics. And oh, yeah. And uh, they were the uh, the Pentecostal Church was holy. The Baptists did the same thing. So, 
I don't want to just zero in on one group of people here. But we all were taught that it was the Catholics. No, it is Christians that have fallen away from God. That's who it is. And it's Christians that have gotten under uh, what I call a bewitching spirit. And that bewitching spirit is that same spirit that you see over in Galatians, where Paul came in after he had ministered to those people. He came back through and he said, my God, who has bewitched you that you would replace? And I'm paraphrasing in my own language now, not from a paraphrased Bible. He says, who has bewitched you that you're ready to give up Jesus? For this other spirit that I see here. And that's what we're looking at, Shannon. And it's desperate to get the people to see. When we talk about, for instance, the third wave movement, it is huge. And it takes in all kinds of little streams uh, that feed into that third wave movement. And this movement is uh, the one... Uh, Peter Wagner is the head of uh, of uh, the third wave, and uh, he is the one that uh, opened my eyes to what was going on concerning the, what we call the Stargates and the vortexes. Yes. Uh, when he came to Florida, and he uh, uh, he um, anointed. Um, Peter Wagner, I went up to his websites and I started looking at Peter Wagner to find out, hey, what's going on here, you know? What is this? And he was saying back then that uh, that they were opening up Stargates. That's what he said. And he said, um, he said uh, they're opening up the gate. I'm reading from something I pulled off his web page right now back then. And he said, we are opening the gate of change to the nations. Now, first place, let me say something about the word change. At the same time that they were talking about change, we have another guy coming running president of the United States. And his whole campaign was about change. Remember that? Well, here you've got Christians. Their whole statement is about change. Well, see, I want to stay founded and grounded in the Word of God. I don't need change. Jesus is enough for me. But here's what he says, uh, what he had said back then. Peter Wagner said, this is a year to open the gates. He said, most of us think that the gate is a physical place that will appear in front of you. However, the first gate we must go through is heaven's gate. This is where we enter boldly into the throne room and receive super abundant grace so that we can leap through the place of the new, in quotation marks, in the earth. Well, now, uh, that's his definition of change. It's also a definition of a new, uh, what I call the new age occulted Christians. And these Christians have gone into a new age uh, where they have joined uh, the New Agers into what they call opening up these portals. Now, a portal is a door. That's all that means. It's a doorway. And so they are opening up this doorway from um, from this side from the material side of the side that we live on into the supernatural spiritual mystical realms and uh this is the, god had put a a protection uh from the very beginning between that that mystical realm of where the demons live and us 
because demons will kill human beings if they can. And uh, we've seen that with all of the wars and the communism and everything that we see in the world, right? Amen. And so um, what happens throughout the Old Testament, you can see uh, people going into some place that they used to call the high places. And these were the places where they would go to worship their pagan gods. And they would build towers to reach into the heavens. Uh, you can see it over in Genesis uh, 11, 4. Okay? And uh, what they would do is they would build these temples, and they were trying to reach the sun, the moon, uh, and the planets which is what they worshipped. And today, we would call it uh, astrology, okay? And uh, they believed that the, these planets had rule over them, and they determined what was going to happen to them. And the Bible describes uh, in uh, Genesis 11.5, God uh, says the Lord came down to see the city, and the tower which the children of men built. And the Lord uh, confused their tongues, and he scattered them throughout the earth. And so we know that as the Babylonian tower, uh, tower uh, from uh, the Word of God in history. So the point being is that... Um, in the New Testament, when you go over to Ephesians chapter 1, it shows Christians have this mystical, supernatural uh, uh, anointing and connection into the heavens. They, whenever they lift their voices up in prayer, Whenever they talk before the throne of God, uh, Ephesians chapter 1 shows us that Jesus wants our minds to be enlightened, that he gives his power to us who believe immediately because we're connected to him. He's on his throne. That's where uh, heavenly decisions are made. We're on the earth. He lives inside of us spiritually. So we don't have to open up a stargate to go into the throne room. We are already there. Any time, any minute of the day Amen. that we lift our voices up, we're in the throne. Now, Ephesians chapter 2 says that we sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That means Whenever we pray, we're sitting in, in the throne room of Jesus with him at that moment before the throne of God. Now, we can feel that a lot of times. We can, we can see the Lord uh, giving us power and anointings uh, to answer our prayers and our commands to the evil forces of this world when we use his name. So we don't have to open up a stargate, and what these people have down coming back down to the era uh, is that they have they are practicing what occultists call spiritual uh, uh, alchemy, and uh, they uh, when they try to open up the stargates and the wormholes. And they've got another expression that they use, digging wells. And uh, now, uh, Bishop Camco describes the spiritual realms as spirits in the heavenlies. That's just above the earth, and that would be your powers and principalities that we fight against. And then there are spirits on the earth, which uh, when you go over there, uh, the spirits that they deal with on the earth in the jungles, and uh, they are called dwarf spirits in Ghana. I've ministered to many people with these dwarf spirits, and um, that's the spirits on the ground. And then 
uh, there are the spirits from the sea. So there's three dimensions. And uh, so Peter Wagner and them, they believe that through doing these magical words and ritualisms, that they will open up a gate. And remember, a gate is simply a door. Dr. Pat, hmm? hold that thought there. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I can hear you fine, but some people out there are saying that uh, you're coming in a little bit choppy. So yeah. it just may be because I've Skyped you directly to me. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, stand by, and then I'm going to call you directly on Skype via the uh, blog talk switchboard. Okay. So, um, folks, uh, bear with us just a second. We're going to Dr. Pat back on, directly connected to the switchboard. And if you're just tuning in, you're going to listen to Omega Man Radio Network tonight. This is a live program, and uh, I'm broadcasting uh, from overseas. I'm using the Skype tonight, so I want to thank God that uh, we were able to do a program. I'm um, uh, back hopefully every night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. That's our plan. As long as the Skype holds up, while I'm on the road, there should be no uh, discontinuance of the program. We may have a little bit of technical challenges from time to time, but uh, hopefully the uh, the sound quality will be good enough that we can um, do the program every night. So stand by here a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to punch Dr. Pat up on the switchboard, and we'll get her right back on, and we're going to continue. And we're talking tonight about uh, the third wave, Stargates exposed, what's really going on. In the Third Wave Church, we're, t we're going to be talking about Kundalini. I'll be giving you um, verbatim what the Satanists believe Kundalini is. It'll be eye-opening when you hear me read their paragraph on it. And um, we do have a live chat going on right now, so bear with us just a moment. We'll be right back. Hello. All right, Dr. Pat, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I can hear okay. you perfectly. Okay, perfect. You're back on. All we did is I just tied you back into the switchboard. Well, so can uh, they hear? Can they hear us now? Oh yeah, that should be fine. And uh, you, okay. you keep you pick back up where you left off. Oh, I do want to add in. Uh, you were talking about earlier how you know the third wave would have us believe that we need to astral project into the third heaven. And you know, folks, just right. as Doctor Pat said, we don't have to do that. <laughs> We've got Hebrews 4.16, which says, Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace, that we right. may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We can go into the throne room anytime we want. Uh, and yes. it does not require astral projection. But let me just say right. what, as to what they're doing. They're astral projecting you, all right, but they're not taking you into the third heaven. You know, God would not allow you to come that way. That would be like going over the wall. Yeah. And you, you don't get in over the wall. you got to go right through the straight gate. Uh, what's going on is the demons are giving you a sensation of going into a third heaven, but uh, you're not going there at all. Uh, you're all under you're under demon power and a demonic experience, and uh, there's a big danger doing that because, number one, it's witchcraft, and number two, if a silver cord gets broken, you don't make it back to your body. That's right. So, it's a witchcraft so. practice. Amen. And uh, uh, when you see uh, powerful uh, leaders in the body of Christ that are doing the same thing that wizards, witches, and New Agers are doing, then you have to be very concerned because these are the people that have power over the souls and the minds of the people in churches. And the people in churches just just follow these people. And they think, well, this is my pastor, or this is my uh, leader of my denomination saying this. Uh, if it's not in the Word, just chunk it out. That's all I'm going to tell you about that. But let me tell you what Peter Wagner says in his teaching concerning opening the gates and entering heaven's gates, is what he calls it, through powerful, and they're powerful, deceiving devils and spiritual activities, and their purpose really truthfully is, excuse me, to, to steal souls. Uh, Peter Wagner, 
is a New Age believer that presents his spiritual acme uh, to the body of Christ, and he says, quote, in this year, now this, he wrote this probably back in 207, maybe 208, but he says, in this, uh, in this year, to open the gates, one gate we must swing wide open is the gate of change. Most of us think that the gate is a physical place that will appear in front of you. However, the first gate we must go through is heaven's gate. This is where we enter boldly into the throne room and receive a super abounding grace so that we can leap through the place of the new what uh, of the place of quote new in the earth okay that's well, uh, Peter Bible Wagner says, quoting that Dr. Pat yes I'm quoting him directly okay. from his webpage he's and talking so, about heaven's gate go ahead yeah and 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 he's also at the same time uh, he's talking about a new in the earth well you see what the earth is uh, waiting for is uh, it's waiting for a new religion, it's waiting for a new church, and it's waiting for a new financial system, yeah. and a one-world government. And uh, the old earth is Jesus, his believers, his church. That's the way the New Agers look at us. And they believe now, Peter Wagner and this group of people are people that uh, believe that they will become as gods. Their writings say that. They believe that. And they also believe that they are a group of people that they call themselves Joel's Army. And they, re they refer to Joel's Army as being over in the second chapter of Joel. Joel. Well, when you study that, you find out that those scriptures in Joel 2 uh, correspond with scriptures over in a Revelation that shows uh, the same type of, uh, of uh, wording uh, and those uh, of the locusts. You remember those scriptures of the locusts and, and the frogs coming out, and it's actually describing the army of the Antichrist. That's right, over now, in Revelation nine eleven. And when I was in, uh, when I when I was a baby Christian, I had actually heard preachers stand up and teach that Joel's army was the army of God, but I believe it's describing the army of the devil. Wow. Now, let me say that what their theology is, they believe that in these last days that they, this group of people, and it's big, it's huge, they believe that they are going to take over the church system. Those people that refuse to join and step with them, they're going to die. Uh, they believe that they will perfect the church, and then they believe that they will take over the world and the wealth of the world. That's why you hear them talking about opening the star gates to the wealth of the world and things like that to the nations. Yeah. Well, what they actually believe is that when they perfect the church, then they will perfect the world. Of course, we're all supposed to die, true believers. And uh, then when they perfect the world, then Jesus comes back. So what they're actually teaching is that they are the ones that cause the end time to be perfected and for, uh, to make a way for Jesus to come back to a perfected world. That is not the Bible. The Bible says that Jesus will return to the earth whenever Armageddon takes place over in uh, Jerusalem, in the uh, area of uh, Megiddo. The Antichrist is there. The frost prophet's sitting there. 
and Apollyon is sitting in the Antichrist. So the satanic trinity is what I like to call them. They're sitting there, and they're on the verge of totally destroying the world. When you hear the shout in the Reb a book of Revelation, where Jesus comes on the white horse and the big angel that blocks out the sun, that's how big he is. And the Bible says that Jesus speaks with a double-edged sword. That means a sword of mercy and a sword of, uh, of, um, of um, war, judgment. And it, uh, it, it, the, sword, the word sword means the word. He just speaks the word. And then the angel comes. He binds those uh, prophets, uh, the Antichrist and the false prophet and the devil, the uh, Apollyon, and cast them into hell. And God, uh, Jesus never lifts his finger to fight the devil, and the reason he doesn't is because he's already won victory over the devil. He, does ne he never has to fight him again, and he only has to fight him through the word, through his word. And that's what we fight the devil with is through our word, being commissioned by him to use his word. That's how we cast out devils. Amen. But I wanted to tell you about the Stargate, because the Bible truly does show Stargates. Now, we never referred to them as Stargates, because we didn't know this uh, occult terminology until just, you know, I think they've had movies concerning Stargates and um you would know more about that than I do, but um, the Stargate is an expression, and what it means is it means uh, an opening that you can go through to get from this place to another place. And uh, a wormhole uh, is just, uh, it's like a Stargate, an opening that you go through but then in the meeting, in the middle, it's got just a little tiny tunnel that connects another stargate that takes you from one side of the universe to the other side of the universe. And that's how they can travel so quickly in these billions of miles is through these wormholes. So, but I don't want to get too technical here. We want to keep this simple. But Jesus talks about a stargate in John 10, verses 1 through 5. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the shepherd, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. So Jesus says in that scripture very clearly, that there are people that are going to try to come in to heaven through another way. And I believe that that's what uh, the Babylonian religious people were doing. You can see pictures of uh, early uh, Babylonian worshipers, and they're in uh, a boat looking type of a thing, and they're trying to go through stargates. I mean, they, these are in antiquity pictures over there in Egypt. So there's always people that are trying to get to heaven another way aside from Jesus. And so uh, the truth of it is, is Jesus never told his disciples to open the gates to the third heaven. You can't find that in the Bible. So what do we do? We chunk that away. He never told people to seek after mammon which is a very powerful devil of financial wealth to preach witchcraft. He never told his believers that they could that uh, they would receive spiritual gifts from the Holy Ghost uh, to do his work through the powers of mammon. And yet, that is another gospel that these preachers started preaching probably 20 years ago. And in John 10, 2, it says, But he that entered into the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Verse 3, To him the porter 
D-O-O-R-T-E-R, which is the door, opens. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. So we have to constantly stay connected to Jesus uh, so that he will open up his star gate to us. He opens it. We don't. We just uh, we just speak to him, and the Bible says that when we pray, uh, we go right into the presence of God. It says our our words, our prayers are like sweet smelling Savior to Him. So we have this divine, supernatural, spiritual connections with the Lord, and He doesn't need a new group of people to lead his people into dangerous witchcraft pathways of the wolves. And he doesn't want you to follow after stargate chasers uh, or deluded false prophets. Uh, He just simply asks us to repent and renounce our wickedness and uh, uh, seeking after fleshy desires and worldly materialisms. He's just asking us to present our own bodies as a living sacrifice. And then in uh, John 10, 4, he says, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice, and a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know the voice of the strangers. Dr. Pat, you know, that is so important for people to understand, because there are, there's been a number of recorded instances where there have been false prophets in the land, and they have led people into mass suicide. Let's look at Jim Jones, for example. Look at all the people that followed him to uh, Guyana. Mm-hmm. And were made to drink Kool Aid. In fact, I uh, I worked for a guy back in the '90s who was a uh, Army helicopter pilot and had the, the test to fly over uh, Jonestown over there in Guyana. Uh, basically, two or three days after all the people committed suicide, he actually landed on the ground and found Jim Jones's body with his head blown off. But uh-huh. that's what happens when you get involved in these cults, people. Excuse me, one sec. There's another group that maybe people remember, Dr. Pat. It was called the Heaven's Gate Group. Right. Do you remember back in 97, there was a uh, a group of, basically they were um, computer <laughs> computer web page designers. And right. 39 of them committed suicide, huh. all dressed in um, like um, special tennis shoes. They had change in their pocket, okay, so that they could catch this UFO that was coming up behind the Hell Bop Comet. And they believed that they needed to go through the uh, the Stargate, the Heaven's Gate, and evacuate this planet before it was destroyed. So what did they do? They committed suicide. They were found on their bunk beds with change in their pockets for the tolls. Folks, what's going on now is not that far removed. We talked to a guy last week who was sent to one of these Brownsville revival groups where Todd Bentley was present some years ago. He was asked to lay down, and they were all told to close their eyes, and they were going to ask to project into the heaven. And, you know, he heard uh, demonic voices in the background. And the people flopping around on the ground like snakes. The next thing he's going to do is to tell you to take Kool-Aid. I mean, it's not that far removed. What we're dealing with, Dr. Pat, we're dealing with modern-day cults, with demonized clergymen, leading people off into the desert. And Jesus said, uh, when they say, go out in the desert, Jesus is there, don't go out there. If you go into the you know, the inner sanctum, don't go down there. You know, I think we're seeing that before our very eyes. Well, we are. And the Bible, the Bible prophesizes that there will be a great, great falling away just before the Lord comes. And the Lord spoke to me several years ago, and he said, Pat, you are in the falling away. Now, uh, whenever John, uh, Todd Bentley came to the state of Florida, 
he was very easy to discern because he looked demonic. Uh, he was a man that looked like a Hell's Angel motorcyclist. His body had a bo uh, uh, tattoos. Uh, the people call it a body suit, where their whole body gets tattooed in a suit. And all of these tattoos that were on his body had uh, Eastern religious significance. Now, this is how I started getting well known over the Internet, is when I started uh, revealing uh, Todd Bentley's and what he taught and his tattoos. Uh, I had 500,000 hits up on script when I, when I uh, exposed uh, Todd Bentley. When uh, Obama came through, I started exposing him a little, and somebody wrote on and said, uh, Obama visits here tomorrow, and they erased my script. And, but some of those uh, things are still up on the Internet, and one of them that I would send you to is an angel called Emma. And in that particular uh, article, it's the first article that I wrote concerning what his tattoos meant. And I've written many others. Uh, but the tattoos were all connected into Eastern religious worship. And so the point being is you, could, you can look at Todd Bentley and you can see a fallen person if you belong to Jesus and close to the Lord. However, the most amazing thing was that in our city and in the state of Florida and around the country, there were Pentecostal pastors from the Assembly of God with big churches right here in our, in our city. Uh, there were charismatic ministers with big churches packing up their buses, running over to see Todd Bentley. And I said, God, what is this? I said, these are the same people that rejected me because I used to be a, a, a classy woman in the world, not a prostitute, but I came out of politics and, you know, I dressed exclusive with designer clothes and diamonds and things like that. And these same pastors rejected me because I wore makeup, false eyelashes, and wore jewelry and wore wigs. And here we've got these same people years later accepting a man that looks like a Hell's Angel motorcyclist that uh, admitted after he was uncovered that every single night he went up on that platform, he was drunk on booze, not the Holy Ghost, and he was having an affair with this woman. So what it shows is this. It shows that uh, they became blinded. The, the ministers are blinded, and they cannot see. And the only cure for this spiritual blindness that has fallen on the Christian church in America and the world is intercession for the pastors, binding the powers of darkness that have taken over the churches and calling out before the throne of God for mercy for these people. Because a big, if Jesus came today, there would be very, very few, I believe, that would be able to go into the kingdom of God. I really do believe that, watching what I've watched in the last few years. So we've got to make sure that we're in the right pew, that Jesus Christ is our Savior, that we're truly, truly connected into Christ, and that we're preparing our spirits to meet him when he comes. Amen. So now let's get back to the portal, because you did mention those people, and all of them died. Uh, in both of those cases that you just mentioned, uh, Shannon, and the reason that they died was that they were that they were following a man. They weren't following God. They were following a men that were under the inspiration of demonic forces. Amen. And so when when the man that they had been following blindly 
told them to kill themselves and their kids, they all just took the Kool-Aid. And, yes, and of did. course, when they took the Kool-Aid, they all died in mass. And I believe that that's what we're seeing happening in the church. They're following these blinded occultist type people that are trained to bewitch their minds through hypnotic powers. Uh, yes. They are also supernaturally uh, connected into the powers of witchcraft and wizardry, yes. where these uh, uh, men, under the inspiration of these devils, know how to hypnotize people in masses, and they also know how to speak what I call magical words and uh, uh, use what um, the occultists call al alchemy. And when they talk about opening up these portals, these stargates, they're using magical words and alchemy, and yes. they're breaking open the barrier between God's world and Satan's world and our material world. And the, they're giving these devils, you know the Bible says that some of these devils are chained. Well, what they're doing is they're letting the devils come unchained into our world. Let me just quickly, Amen. and I'll let you speak for a minute, but let me let me just quickly tell you something that I saw. A lot of the YouTubes they've erased that I have listed in some of these newsletters because they were just getting the devil punched right in his face all the time, and people were streaming out of their meetings, and they were having uh, financial problems. So they would go up, Pat King, Patricia King, and Todd Bentley and some of them uh, would go up and have those uh, YouTubes erased. But they had a YouTube where P Patricia King had interviewed um, one of these women in Todd Bentley's uh, place, and she had had a vision, and in the vision, she had uh, been digging what she called digging a well. Now, digging a well means that you're digging a well in the ground to let the uh, angels come forth. Well, we all know, at least I believe, that Satan's kingdom is in the center of the earth in fire and down underneath the sea. But they're digging wells to let these angels come through. And she said she looked down and she saw this angel, and he was in a room, and he had chains all around him. And uh, she said she asked him who he was. And the angel told her that he was the keeper of the records. And <laughs> he told her, that he had been chained there uh, since the beginning, is what he told her. And so, uh, of course, I wrote an article about that and uh, described that that she had actually probably uncovered one of these angels that Jude, uh, the book of Jude says, that these angels are are tied down there in the uh, underworld or the uh, hell or the pit or whatever you want to call it, that they're chained down there. But the Bible shows that, it shows that these angels are going to be released at a certain time. And I believe that in the last days that these angels are going to be released. That's what I personally believe. I believe yeah. some of them have already been released, if you want to know. So uh, what what do you have to say about that? Well, sure. Uh, you know, Revelations 9-11 talks about the dead being opened up. You know, the, the king of uh, Hades or the pit or hell, uh, Apollyon or Abaddon, uh, is going to open up that thing, and those spirits will be released. And you've got the spirits that have been chained over in the river Euphrates, probably from demons, that are going to be coming out. And um, what we're trying to do is warn you. Because what you're following, if you've been in, uh, going to the early churches, is you're following a new Jim Jones, a new Heaven's uh -huh. Gate leader, and it won't be too far uh, down the road before they have you drink Kool-Aid and get on mass. Uh, you're already doing that in many ways with churches. You're killing your soul. 
you're going in and you're having a Kundalini part into you. Okay, they're unleashing false fire. They're calling down false angels like Mo, and they're causing people to engage in witchcraft as religion. Uh, we had someone in the, the uh, chat room say, well, it's, a myth, it's mentioned over there in Ecclesiastes. About, you, know, the silver, you know, unless the silver cord ever be broken. Uh-huh. And so uh, it happens all the time. What happens, folks, is under demon power, a person's soul is separated from the body, attached to the cord. And you can, you know, go around anywhere in the world that you want. Witches and want do every night. They come down and they spy on people. They sexually yeah. attack. They attack. Shannon, them. Shannon, you're breaking up. Uh, coming through clear. No, you're breaking up. Okay. Well. Uh, am uh, I coming through clear? Yeah, I can mine. Yeah, because you're okay. you're uh, you're breaking up or something. Let's see if I can close out a window. Uh, well, while you're doing that, I'll be talking. Well, you know, Dr. And Pat, I, um, I, I want to play a little clip of the third wave is all about. Uh, this is something okay. we played a few months ago. Yes. And everybody out there, I just, you know, I apply the blood of Jesus to you right now and uh, ask God and his angels to surround the people of God. Let me show you uh, a glimpse in a lot of these third wave churches. I'm going to play a clip here. Stand by. Okay. among us. All right. Tori's got something she's going to release. And when this releases, it's going to be like a starting gun for the ministry time. So those of you who like ministry, go ahead and stand up. Get in the middle section. Youth, children, those who have been touched by the fire, prepare to minister. Yeah. Two days ago, I saw Jesus opening himself up and walking in our midst. Today, the phrase that keeps going in my mind and in my heart is that my deep calls out to his deep. My deep calls out to his deep. My deep called out to your deep Jesus. My deep called out to you. My deep called out to his deep. My deep called out to his deep. And I want to stop that clip right there, but uh, that would be a taste of what's going on in these churches, Dr. Pat. Yeah, let me tell you where that came from. That came from uh, Rick Joyner's church, and uh, that, you heard the, the drums in the background, and you heard that weird sound. Well, it, it, I, I'm old enough to remember the cowboy movies. I don't know if you are or not, oh, but yeah. in some <laughs> of the cowboys movies – they would show you the Indian worship scenes, and that's an Indian chant. And what these people, the third wave people and Todd Bentley and these kind of people believe is that the native Indian spirits are higher than our Christian spirits because they're old. Now, when Todd Bentley was down in Florida, they had all of these Indians in his meeting, and they were playing those drums. 
And if you listen to their music, the drum beat, uh, the Indian drum beats have a big uh, thing. Uh, whenever he lost the power of the MO, because we closed the Stargate, and he couldn't get Emma O to, to, to do any more work for him, he was screaming out, angels, come down, and the people were out there screaming, angels, come through. Well, some of us were down here binding the wormhole or the uh, stargate, and we shut it. And so there was a woman right in the middle of that, and you can find it up there still on YouTube, uh, where he's calling down the Holy Ghost or his Holy Ghost. She's right in the center of the picture, and that is not a human being. I know that through discerning of spirits, that, that is a fallen angel. It looks like a, a woman. But in the background, you can hear these drums going, and he's calling for the natives to, to uh, come forth and call the angels down from heaven. So this is a, what you call, we call a mixture of, um, it's called a mixture of religions where everybody's religion are going to come together and all can go into the kingdom of God that Jesus is not the only gate anymore. But let me let me say something real quick too before we go on <laughs> because whenever uh, we've already discussed heaven's gates heaven's gates to us is we already are connected with Jesus in heaven's gates. We don't have to open up a stargate. But in Matthew 27:51 it says, "And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom, and the earthquake and the rocks rent." Now, what was that talking about? When Jesus died, before Jesus died, there was that in the synagogue or the temple, there was the veil between the people and only the priests could go into that uh, place where God would make his appearance once a year to to heal the, the uh, sins of the people. Well, you see, when when Jesus died, the veil between God and people that believe in him was rent, and they can now go directly before the throne of grace, and they don't need a priest. They don't need a portal to be opened by a man to the third heaven. They only go directly before the throne of God. That's what that scripture means. The veil was hey, rent. And I'll tell you something, Dr. Pat. We're at These the people that... Yes, we're at the uh, we're at the top of the hour. We're going to take a break, folks. Thanks for reminding. Dr. Pat, give out your contact information before we go to break. It's uh, uh, patholiday dot com and H. Well, it's uh, miracleinternetchurch dot com, remnantradio uh, dot org, and Omega Man. Radio.com. And we're we'll back after the break with Dr. Pat Holliday and the School of Liberance.
Almighty from Numbers chapter 33 verse 50 and Yahweh spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho saying speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them when ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures and destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down all their high places and ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein for I have given you the land to possess it Omega Man Radio is declaring all out war on all witches, warlocks and the hosts of hell our mandate is clear we will not fail join with us in the fight and spread the word about Omega Man Radio our mission is to invade enemy territory and possess the land killing the sick and setting the captives free of demons in Jesus' name. Tune in each night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific at OmegaManRadio.com. All right, that's Omega Man Radio. Let's get Dr. Pat back on the line. Dr. Pat, you back with me? I'm with you, but you're breaking up pretty bad. Okay, it's my upload speed, so... Okay. Um... Let's continue. Uh, one thing that we're in danger of is the Stargates. Talk a little bit about yeah. the Kundalini. Yeah, the Stargates. The Stargates are um, the entrance that the demon forces come from the other side into the mirror, uh, materialistic world. And uh, what they do is they bring another spirit. Uh, uh, with them that is called the Kundalini Spirit. And the Kundalini Spirit is just a spirit that means snake. In Hindu worship, uh, they call it the Kundalini that uh, lives down in the bottoms of their spine when they're invited in. And uh, it's uh, part of their religious and what they do is they crawl up the spine as they practice Hinduism. And, you know, uh, Hinduism worships over 500 million gods. And so they don't care what god you worship. You can worship Jesus as long as it's not the real Jesus, you see. So uh, that Kundalini spirit is ruling over many people in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ People that I personally have known over the years that used to uh, serve Jesus now serve this new church. You know what I call this church? I call this church the Star Wars Church, a Star (laughs) Wars type of Christianity, a beam me up, Scotty, here I come. (laughs) Because, you see, the way that thing operates, uh, Brother Shannon, is it it, um, started through their chief prophet, the Third Wave's chief prophet, and this guy's name was Bob Jones. And Bob Jones was connected to a fellow that was um, around in the 50s, 1958, by the name of William Branham. And William Branham created a new type of Christianity, where he depended on angels or an angel to come into his meeting and to minister to the sick, and he claimed the sick were being healed. Another man that used this same principle was a man by the name of John G. Lake. Now, many people in Christianity follow both of these uh, old people. Uh, William Branham believed that Jesus... Uh, He created a a religion called Jesus Only, where Jesus was God the Father, Jesus was God the Son, and Jesus was the Holy Ghost, which that isn't what the Bible teaches. And they totally rejected what uh, became known as the Trinitarian Church, where there's three distinct people in the Godhead. But anyway, getting away from that, This angel became the focal point of this man's life. And what we have today is a fully blown uh, 
religion that started with Branham that has been built on year after year by the people that followed him. Uh, one of the ones that came forth in the um, 80s, for instance, was a fellow by the name of Paul. Many of you might remember him from Atlanta, Georgia. And Polk was a man that came out of the Church of God. He was called in an adulterous situation. His own father was a very famous Church of God minister that had stood before kings and king, queens across the world, very well respected in that denomination. His own father came to Atlanta and took his papers from him to be a Church of God pastor. And Paul started a new uh, group that uh, was connected in on Manifested Sons of Doctrines. And that particular group became known as Kingdom Now people. And he started teaching Manifested Sons of God. And from that, that some people in that group, including him and his brother, the, they had a doctrine that they said that you could be married, but that you could have a spiritual affair with somebody that, of your choosing, which would end up in a sexual affair. And so that Harvester's Church up in Atlanta came under uh, uh suits from women that uh, both he and his brother had selected and had uh, uh, an affairs with. And so it's a twisted doctrine that you can have perverse sex, you can uh, have that sex and still remain in good standing. So it's another, ch it's another church, it's another gospel. But within, uh, when Peter Wagner came in, he and Chuck Pierce are more supernatural and spiritual than some of these guys, and they brought in what I call uh, the Star Wars-type Christianity of Beam Me Up. They, they connected in to Bob uh, Jones. Yes. Now, get this, uh, Shannon. Bob Jones was in the mental institution. This is his testimony. I got it from his own testimony. One night, uh, demonic angels were coming to him in the mental institution. He said the next night, angels started coming, and they showed him how to go into the third heaven. Now, he said that Jesus appeared to him in the mental institution and said, Bob, I'll let you out of the mental institution, but you have to kill 12 men. What I never else? could find out what that meant to him, but he did get out. Uh, but this is where they're getting the doctrines from of going into the third heavens. Now, uh, Bentley describes going into a restaurant to having a, a meal with Bob Jones, and Bob Jones tells Bentley that he goes into the third heaven. And Bentley says, well, Bob, I want to go in the third heaven. He said, take my hand. I'll take you there. I go in there every day. Uh -oh. And that's how, uh, that's how Todd Bentley was introduced in going into the third heaven. So it's a demonic doctrine that came from the roots of a demonic man called uh, William Branham, and the yes. Church of God, the Assemblies of God, the Pentecostal Holiness, and uh, your denominational churches rejected Branham as being a heretic because he had changed his ideas of the foundation of the Christian church. So that's where all this stuff is, and it keeps building. One person comes in, and he builds upon the darkness of the person before him. So they call it, by the way, uh, C. Peter Wagner and a guy that he wrote with by the name of Ben F. Gray, the New Apostolic Reformation. And um, it's changing and has changed 
the shape of Christianity, not only in America, but in worldwide. It has changed. It's it's changed names of, of, of meanings in Christianity itself. Things that they say don't mean things that they used to mean. New methods, new worships of uh, expressions, and this little group of people started out with Peter Wagner was the head of it, and all of these ministers have been inducted in under Peter Wagner, and they become what he calls apostles, and then he's got other people that he calls gatekeepers, and. Now, Shannon, what is so interesting about this form of Christianity is that they are uh, of an extension of a group called the Latter Rain. And the Latter Rain used to be known as the New Order of the Latter Rain. And uh, the uh, interesting thing about it is they believe that their representatives in any given city is God's chosen leader and that no one else can represent Jesus Christ in that city except the person that they choose. So if you're in a city and your pastor is under this uh, era, He's taken his directives from C. Peter Wagner, who has retired now, and also is taking his direction from a guy called uh, uh, now uh, Chuck Pierce, who just took over Peter Wagner retired. And so they make up the rules, and they believe that every town should be ruled over by one big principal church. And little churches are not supposed to exist. So they pray. Now the gatekeeper together with the apostolate, um, uh, apostle of that city, chooses whether or not somebody can come into the city and have a meeting. And if they say, if they don't like, if Shannon wanted to come to Jacksonville and have a meeting here in Jacksonville, uh, these men would come together and women, and they'd say, he's not one of us, and they would pray against him coming, and they would shut the doors to the people of their churches to support his meeting, and the, pe uh, the people, uh, they have killed what I call evangelism in the United States through this system that they have developed. Uh, it's uh, the way that they transfer that spirit that they're under is through a term that they call transference uh, of an impartation. And it comes through the will of man by the laying on of that man or woman's hands and confession and deliverance from what they call religion, uh, and uh, it imparts what they call spiritual gifts. So when you go into these people's meetings and you let them lay their hands on you, you will get an impartation of the Kundalini spirit. And now, I've ministered to this spirit. I have cast it out many times. And uh, I believe uh, uh, Brother Shannon has cast it out, too. And I'm just telling you, I know that it's real. And I know that these people are carrying in their vessels heretical doctrines of demons. Now, let me tell you something. In 1949, the uh, doctrines that these people are moving with were deemed heretical by the Assembly of God denomination and many of your others. But there's records where the Assembly said these are heresy doctrines. Today, many ministers in the Assembly of God are now carrying this spirit in their vessels, like John uh, Kilpatrick, is one of them who had the Brownsville revival. 
uh, he's now having a new revival out in Alabama. Now, there have been people that have come from that revival over to our church, because we live in the state of Florida, too, with these uh, kundalini spirits in them. Young people would go over to Brownsville, come back and shake and tremble for weeks at a time. Uh, the kundalini spirit is real, and it has manifestations that are real, and they're not. They are not the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And so I know last week I mentioned um, Brownsville, and some people got real upset because they believed that it was of God, that it just turned sour. What I'm telling you here is that it was never of God, that it was brought into Florida, it, uh, this uh, false revival spirit uh, was prophesied by Paul Cain, who came from the Brownsville, uh, uh, that came from the, uh, the uh, revival of Brannan in the 50s, appeared out at Kansas City Prophets, which is uh, Bickle's place. Uh, they call it the IHOP. And uh, this Bob Jones, who was in... Branham's ministry, and they were received in uh, Kansas City prophets as their chief prophets because they were old and they came from that uh, false revival. They prophesied these false revivals because they believe that in the last day a great mighty revival will break out, they'll take over the church, and then they'll take over the world. So, they prophesied the revival would start up in Canada, which a revival started up in Canada called the Airport Revival, starting in some guy's name by the name of Arnott. Uh, a guy by the name of Steve Hill flew from Canada over to England. He carried that revival in one of the big charismatic churches in England. And from England, after that church had been infected with this false devil, he flew to America, to Brownsville, John Kilpatrick's church. They had the big revival there. They ended up, when the fire kind of cooled down there and the information started bouncing around the country and people began to become aware that it was false, John Kilpatrick had to uh, resign from the church. He and uh, Steve Hill left the state of Florida. John went up to Alabama, bought another church, and Steve Hill went to uh, Texas. And so uh, making a long story short, a lot of uh, things came uncovered after they left the area, some of the they claim that the crime rate went down and all kinds of weird things. And the city gave a report to the local press that none of those things ever happened. So devil's lie, friends. Uh, just like Todd Bentley was uh, saying at one time, 150 people got raised from the dead when he was over in Lakeland. When he went up on international Secular television, ABC and uh, NBC, it came uncovered. He could not produce uh, 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 substantiation of one, uh, of one death being raised or one miracle. So you can believe what they say, the devil lies. What I'm telling you here today, my friends, go and read the Bible. Read the true King James. Repent. Ask Jesus to deliver you from these, this false revival. Ask Jesus to, to open up your spiritual understanding to the Word of God. You will not understand it unless the Holy Ghost gives it to you as inspired. Uh, ask Jesus to deliver you from the Kundalini spirit. Because, friends, what I'm going to tell you is, if you've ever been to Brownsville, if you've ever been to the airport uh, revival, the ones over in uh, England, uh, the 700 clubs in it, the TBN people are in it, 
the Word of Faith people are in it. Uh, the Assemblies of God, many of those pastors are in it. Let me tell you, you better pray about who lays hands on you. And you better pray that God will show you the truth. Because here's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, we shall know one another by the Spirit of God. We don't know each other by because I'm famous and you might know my name or because Kenneth Copeland has a billion dollars and he's one of the richest pastors or whatever he is in the world. And Joyce Myers is the best-known female minister in the world and has five mansions that cost over a million dollars apiece. Or TBN has 50 mansions across the world that they own. You don't know the Spirit of God through these techniques. You know it through repenting for your sins, asking God to come and live in your heart to forgive you, and humbly come in and ask him to help you to know the truth. Isn't that right, Brother Shannon? Amen. And let me do a microphone uh, check. How am I coming through, Dr. Pat? Still a little bubbly, not as bad to me now. That's the chat room. And I may have to uh, dial back in and try a different connection. But okay. uh, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Omega Man Radio. I've got Dr. Pat Holliday on tonight. Dr. Pat, give out your contact information. Uh, PatHolliday.com, um, MiracleInternetChurch.com, OmegaRadio.com, and RemnantRadio.org. Dot org. Uh, uh-huh. Dr. Pat, I yes. was doing some research on the country spirit, and uh, I came across an article on a Satanist website, which probably gave one of the most articulate descriptions I have found yet on what Kundalini is all about. Uh-huh. And um, folks, this is this. Uh, the Satanists know good and well what Kundalini is, and uh, I'm sure they don't have a problem with the mainstream church getting infected by it. But uh, this is real. This is not a figment of our imaginations. And let me read a paragraph like that. Okay. This is a description from a, uh, a warlock on what Kundalini is. Okay, so uh, I'll try to get through this. Uh, it says, in Hatha... And Kundalini Yoga, reading exercises, martial arts exercises, these are for raising the so-called witch power, the vril or the chi, which is the essence of sinism. Now, did you hear that statement? Okay. Now, what they, they, they go on to say is the serpent is the most sacred symbol in Satanism. Call me so far? Yes. It says the serpent represents the Kundalini force at the base of the spine, and when the serpent is activated through power meditation or specific exercises, it ascends through the seven chakras, bringing intense awareness, enlightenment, psychic powers, and abilities, and all-knowing. It says the hooded cobra, seen in many ancient carvings and paintings in Egypt, symbolizes the resultant expanded consciousness of the serpent. And they go on to say that this is the true foundation of Satanism once in raising the serpent. Those who are successful in raising the serpent energy are on a much higher spiritual level. Now, you get it so far? Yes. Okay, now. Let me you're breaking do a, up very bad. Very bad, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, um, if they can't hear me legibly, then what I should probably do is try to dial back in. So let's just, I'm going to take a music break, and then I'm going to dial back in and see if I can get a better connection. So we'll take about a five-minute break, and we'll be right back with School of Deliverance. Okay.
to Omega Man Radio. The show that will put meat on your spirit man's bones. Miracle 
uh, church is a place where you can at least get ministry uh, to be free. That's what it was. Uh, it's also a teaching ministry, and it's a ministry uh, that uh, you can find a little love and care. <laughs> I guess that's my amen best that. description of it. Well, amen. And, um, Dr. Pat, before I get cut off, I was uh, giving just a description about what Kundalini is from the standpoint of the Satanist out there. Right. And Kundalini, folks, is the serpent of fire. It's a symbol of Kundalini. It lies all at the base of the spine. They say it's beneath the Moladhara Chakra, and it is to ascend the serpent, which is a powerhouse of energy, from the base of the spine, through all the seven chakras, and out through the crown chakra on the top of the head. Now, in order to do this, the seven chakras must be completely open and unobstructed. Now, this is a definition and a description from a Satanist, okay? Uh-huh. They say uh, Kundalini is the life force in its very sexual nature. And when we do the depth, the use of this force can be applied to many other objectives. Okay, so here's what's going on, folks. This is a demonic spirit, which uh, the Satanists, the witches, and the warlocks believe in. And they actually are trying to get it to ascend up through the spine, through what they call their chakras. And they do this through a number of means. One of them is uh, controlled breathing. Another is visualization and concentration. And then also chanting, Okay. Uh-huh. Now, you know, Dr. Pat, there are a lot of Christians out there that are actually channeling uh, and they're into meditation. They're doing the yoga. And uh-huh. the Satanists will tell you that yoga is one of the ways to get this Kundalini spirit to rise up the base of your spine. Uh-huh. And and so, uh, you know, we're seeing yoga in many churches, even in the sanctuaries, along with what you were telling me about ballroom dancing, karate? <laughs> right. And uh, mm-hmm. f- folks, they all have common meditation. Uh, what you're doing is you're opening yourselves up to not only Kundalini of other demons. And uh, I'm reading a book right now by a guy who uh, was an ex-mafia KGB boss. And he went over to Tasmania, learned uh, snake kung fu, and what he got as a result in doing all these meditation and breathing exercises was a red scorpion, uh, a very powerful cobra demon. He probably had Kundalini, just didn't know it. And um, it gave him all his power. And he would use it basically to kill people. And it would basically take him over. And he, he would talk about the beast inside just taking over and would blank out for periods of time. He wouldn't know what had happened, and uh, he would wake up. And be told that he had just, you know, sent three guys to the hospital, taken out ten of them. This demon would just basically take over and rise up inside, just uh, smite his enemies. And there, there are people that are harnessing this power, this demonic, what it is, this demons. Okay, and they're bringing them over through meditation, through blanking themselves out, through blanking out their minds, through astral projecting to the third heaven, as they're being told. And um, the Satan is no very well what they're channeling. They're trying to bring this, um, you know, in, into into focus in their own lives. And here we've got poor Christians out there that are, are getting this demon imparted into them, and they have no idea until it's too late. And, you know, God has mercy on some of them, and some of them make their way, Dr. Pat, to places like Miracle Church. You know, I've dealt with Kundalini. We went in and um, cast this demon out, but there's a lot of people that uh, don't wake up. Uh, they're still being mesmerized by this, and they're being taken deeper and deeper. So, uh, this and is a lot of them are and not this is a real danger. That's what the problem is. Uh, there's a lot of them that are never going to wake up. And so uh, one of the biggest problems that we have is that the church does not want to pray. And, you know, tomorrow night we have an uh, international prayer meeting on the air, and we've got quite a few people that come up and pray with us on, right over the air waves, and we give God the credit for that. But we Good pray man. for the pastors and the churches, and uh, believe it or not, we have had pastors 
to be riding down the road and get to start getting deliverance right in their cars and call us or write us and tell us about these things. And some of them just in sheer amazement that they actually had a demon because here they are pastor in churches and they never believed that they could have a demon because they were a Christian. But if they've never if if they if a person comes out of gray darkness like homosexuality or adultery or if they're a pastor and they fall into adultery uh, or homosexuality, they are going to have a demon. A fellow talked to me the other day, and he was witnessing to this guy that grew up in a Christian home, and he was in one of these local liberal churches where you can do whatever you want to as long as you come to church, uh, kiss up to the pastor and give him a nice tithe. You can do whatever you want to. And so uh, the person that was talking to this man discerned that he had sexual spirits on him. And he said, hey, have you been dating a woman, a woman? He said, oh, yeah, I've got lots of women friends. He said, well, are you oh. married? He said, oh, yes, I'm married. He said, well, do you go to church? Oh, yes, I go to such and church church over there. He said, you see, I was born into a Christian church. He said, but I wanted to be free. So I got out of that church, and I go uh, to a church where I can be free. And I believe that you can have as many women as you want to. And that's the philosophy out there, uh, uh, Shannon. Dr. Pat, a Christian can have it as they want to. Yeah, anything uh, they want. You know, they have it. And we don't cast demons out of people that are not saved because that would be doing them a disservice. If we were to do that, they would just come back seven times worse. They're not going to have anything to fill those voids. We're going to be continuing to walk with Jesus, staying blood washed, filled with the Holy Spirit. And, well, you know, it's dangerous out there. You know, yes. you, get into yoga, you get into medication, medi- then you get into uh, medication too. Um, psychotropic drugs, you get into channeling, you get into acupuncture, you get into Reiki, you get into these third wave uh, churches where they're playing African bombs, summer, summer, uh, summoning fallen angels. You're going to walk out of there, you're going to have demons. You didn't go in there to get. So that I need to warn you about it here tonight. What would what would people have us do, Doctor Pat? Not harm. That would not be doing uh, our friends a service, would it? I, I couldn't hear that. that. Be, I, I, I said. Uh, hear I said, isn't it our responsibility to warn people to wake them yes. up? Yes, you warn them. But what happens a lot of times when you warn, they will reject you. Uh, They will go around and speak ill of you. And Jesus said it like this. He said, you killed the prophets when he was talking to the religious people of his day. He said, you're the same people that killed the prophets that God sent to warn you. And so they, uh, they can't physically come and kill us, or they can, but they'll go to prison. But they can kill your reputation. And they'll yes. rise up and try to talk against you. Uh, Dr. Pat, I'm going to try a microphone boost. Uh, how is this coming through? It's a, that's I think a, it's, that's a little better, yes. Is that a, try one more. Is this any better or is that uh, garbage? That's better. Uh, ask the people in the chat room because they've been complaining. Okay. I'm doing my best to uh, get the microphone level up. Let me know if this is any better, folks. Raj, shall we take some phone calls? Yes. yes. Okay, prayer tonight, folks. The number is open, 917-889-45, or toll free, 877 And uh, we'll take your call. So, Dr. Pat, let's go to our first caller, area code 414, area code. Stand by. Okay, okay. Come on, you're on the air with Dr. Penn Holiday. Hi. Hi. This is Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hey, Dave. Yeah, I'm the 60-year-old that called a few weeks ago, the one that worked in the abortion clinic. 
You run an abortion clinic? No, I used to work in one. Oh, okay. That was just as a um, as a point of uh, acknowledgement. Uh huh. Um, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, we prayed for you. Yeah, you did. I'm off second purpose. Well, how are you doing all right now? I'm doing fine. Yeah, I've been listening to Omega Man for a while and um, uh, been getting some good deliverance as a result of that. Okay, Dr. Pat, you still on the line with us? I'm on the line, but I think that the problem that you're having is the delay because um, there's a delay because of the distance that we're from. And this man uh, isn't coming across hardly at all to me. Okay, let's go to another caller. Stand by. Okay, caller from 920 area code. You're on the air with Dr. Pat. <laughs> there you go, caller once. You're on the Doc, what I'll do is I'll just run the switchboard and uh, I'll let you speak to the callers. So let's okay, get this and next listen to see if I can hear them because I can't hear them at all. Hey, Dr. Pat. Huh. Okay, how about now? Can you hear me, Dr. No. Pat? Sure. I can hear you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, I just, uh, um, we were talking about that Kundalini spirit, you know, right? And, or you guys were and everything. And uh, I've been uh, getting some really good information off of uh, 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 Andrew Strom's uh, website as well. Yeah. Um, you know Andrew? Andrew? Uh, I've only heard about him. I, I don't know him. He came out of the third wave uh Group is all I know about him. Yeah, he uh, got deliverance and. Uh, but and we're not it. here to talk about. Hey, we're not here to talk about Andrew. We're here to find out if you have a need. Okay. <laughs> I I just had uh, I just thought maybe you'd like some information, uh, other information as well. Well, you, know? you see, I, we we know who Andrew is, and we know that we can go up on his website, and anybody listening to us is welcome to do that. But we're not here to talk about Andrew Strom or what he thinks. We're here now to cast devils out. So that's why you oh, call oh, okay. that. All right. So, All right. Okay? All righty. God bless you. Okay. Thank you well, for calling in. You know, um, if you, if you, if you have a need, what we're trying to do is we're trying to meet your need. But, you know, we're having a, 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 a tough time uh, getting through to the callers, and it's taken a lot of time. So I'm wondering if we should just do a mass deliverance, and anybody that has been under the Kendalini spirit that's listening, so that they can get free, because they're not going to get free with this kind of thing going on here. You know what I'm saying, yeah. Chan? Uh, uh, Dr. Pat, let's do that. Okay. Absolutely. I'm going to turn it over to you. Let's do a mass deliverance. Okay. Let's let's just go for after the Kundalini spirit. Now, if you've ever been to one of these meetings, if you've ever been to uh, Canada, over here to uh, Brownsville, up to the new Alabama false thing, or you've ever been over to Todd Bentley, wherever he's appeared, uh, you will have opened the door that this Kundalini spirit has come through. And uh, so what I need to tell you is I believe that the Kundalini is one of the powers and the principalities of uh, religious devils, and it's a water spirit. And when you hear us casting it out, you will hear um, 
Omega Man say I cut its seven heads off and it'll cut and he'll cut the tail off or I will. And uh Kundalini has uh, uh it's it's that snake spirit, it's a cobra spirit. Now sometimes when it's coming out, what it does in order to lodge itself so that it it's harder to get out, it it, it will uh, expand itself up to be bigger than it is, and it will try to stick up in your throat. So if you're having any problem uh, with it in the throat, and you might not even be able to speak, and we sure will not be able to hear you, you just think in your mind, because Jesus knows what your mind is thinking. The devil's don't. But just say, Jesus Make this spirit become smaller so that I can cast it out. That's all you got to do, and it'll come on out, okay? So uh, water spirits, uh, Kundalini is a principality. And uh, the the Osmodius, Asmodius is a principality connected to that. Uh, there's a squid spirit connected to that, and we call them squid because that's how it looks in the spirit realms. The octopus looks like an octopus spirit. Uh, there is um, the uh, spirit of frogs that will be in there that are water spirits. There's spider spirits. There are spirits in there that look like crabs. And so sometimes these particular type of spirits that are in a person, they too will take hold if it's crab spirit. It will take hold with its uh, claws and try to hang on. So if you're having trouble getting deliverance, just again speak to Jesus and say, Jesus, cut whatever's uh, hanging, uh, this thing is hanging on to me because we will not be able to hear you. So I, w I wanted to give you that little bit of advice, and uh, I'll call uh, some principalities out and then, uh, a brother Shannon will call some spirits out Okay Father we take authority over this religious spirit Called Kundalini We bind that thing up We take authority over Leviathan We cut its seven heads off and its tail We oil its scales with the blood of Jesus And with the power of the oil of the Holy Ghost and we say that these things have no staying power. They have to subject themselves to the name of Jesus. We take authority over the spirit of Osmodius, Asmodius, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we bind the spirits that are attached to them of jealousy and of discord. And we bind every marine spirit that's attached to them. We bind incubus and succubus to them in the name of Jesus. And we command all of these spirits to be subjected to the name of Jesus. And we bind up all the marine spirits in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Jesus, that you put warring angels in front of each person. And that, uh, that uh, Jesus that you stand in front of each person. We forbid any devil from trying to hurt the people. We ask the angels to bind their arms, their hands, their feet. Uh, we command that these devils have absolutely no power in Jesus' name, and they must obey. Now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bind these spirits and cage them up right now. And we command those things to come out in the name of Jesus. And you just start taking some deep breaths, and you may feel like you're coughing. Just cough. And, uh, Brother Shannon, you go ahead with some of those spirits. Dr. Pat, uh, I don't know if my uh, connection uh, Can you hear me? I can hear you. I may have to just go ahead and have you do the... Okay. Okay. Uh, we bind up uh, the, um, the uh, water goddesses in the name of Jesus tonight. 
We bind up the pure crown marine spirits in the name of Jesus and all of the spirits that are connected to that spirit in Jesus' name. Bishop Kanko says that that spirit can control 70,000 people. And we bind up any control that it has over anyone listening tonight and go into the cage and you start moving up and out. We bind up the princess marine spirits in the name of Jesus. And all of these pure marine spirits, you have to be subjected to the name of Jesus. We bind up the marine spirit vampire. Now, this uh, vampire is a drug, it's a blood drinking spirit, and uh, it is also a spirit that will come in and it will suck the life out of you. It will suck your, it will make you feel real tired. When you wake up in the morning, you were as tired as you were when you went to bed at night. And we bind that vampire spirit up, and we command it to go into the cage in the name of Jesus, and you start moving out in Jesus' name. It also causes accidents on the road, and when the accident occurs, it will come and drink the blood that comes from the accidents in the name of Jesus. So we bind up all of the blood-drinking devils. And we surround everybody with a wall of fire, the blood of Jesus, and we forbid these devils to have any power over anyone's life. We bind up the spirit uh, that assumes a bridal marine. And this spirit is a central marine spirit and works as Jezebel. And it torments its victims through uh, thoughts, uh, through marriage. It weds them, it becomes their spiritual husband or their spiritual uh, wife. And I believe that it was last week's um, deliverance, part of that uh, session, that a man called in from England, <clears throat> and that man had uh, was married to a water spirit. It was very dramatic deliverance. So if you haven't listened to that last week's uh, tape, I would suggest that you go get it and listen to it. It's very, very uh, intriguing. Now, uh, marine spirits live out in the sea, in the ocean. Their their, uh, habitats are connected uh, to just about every city in the world. There are little uh, places where they live. Uh, they um, travel under the sea. You can find out, there's a scripture, Shannon, that if you can go look at, look it up and type it in for me, it's pathways, pathways under the sea or paths under the sea. And I think it's over either in Psalms or Proverbs. But uh, the Bible shows gateways under the seas. It shows pathways, paths under the sea. It shows inhabitants under the sea. And so there's a whole city, uh, cities under the sea. And so um, these spirits live under the sea. And just like up on the earth, the spirits that we know about, uh, they are some stronger and some weaker. And uh, so, in addition to these sea spirits, when you come into cities, your cities have lakes and rivers. And in the lakes and rivers, you will see uh, uh, there are goddesses under the sea, uh, there are wizards under the sea, there are witches under the sea. And all of these, uh, all of these um, uh, spirits come up, and they are usually what they like to do is they like to inhabit a, a witch or a wizard or human being, and they work through the human being. They work in churches, they work in homes, they work in businesses, and they work to tempt Christians. 
So that's what basically a marine uh, spirit does, and they call them agents. And if you want to learn more about marine spirits, be sure to get the book, Witch Doctor and the Man, Bishop Kento, uh, talks about these spirits and knows them and had lived with them for 12 or 13 years, and he knows them very well. Now, in the uh, book of Isaiah 54, 26 through 17, it says, See, it is I who created uh, the blacksmith, and it is I who created the destroyer to work havoc. No weapon formed against you will prevail, declareth the Lord. And so uh, you have to know that the Lord is the creator of every single thing, every single devil used to be an angel that is fallen. And so the Lord has more power than all of these spirits. And any spirit that leads you to believe that he's unconquerable, that's a, a demonic force speaking, trying to mislead you to think that he's got more power than he's got. They all must yield to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we bind out, uh, bind up all the lake spirits, uh, the river marine spirits, in the name of Jesus. Now, in the lake and river spirits, now this is according to Bishop Kenko's uh, teachings, uh, these river, they're called river bottom marine, river basin, and stone river marine. And they destroy physically, spiritually, and do not appear physically because people to go to the Malams and other places in search of them. Now, uh, we bind up the river, the uh, river bases, uh, basin, and the river stone spirit in the name of Jesus. And... These uh, spirits, uh, the river basin spirit, is a marine spirit that spreads its tentacles over the whole uh, basin of a river and controls all of the marines in the area where it links. So we bind all of its linking tentacles, and we cut them free, and we command the chief river basin spirit to get into the cage and come out right now. If you live along a river or a lake, you could have this spirit. So just take some deep breaths and call them out in the name of Jesus. Sea stone marine spirits. These stone spirits are in rivers and in its victims are either chained or locked inside these rocks. Such victims are normally difficult to reach because it's not easy to impress these demons. However, the Word of God says that Jesus is our hammer, and we ask Jesus to break all these rocks up and all of these barriers up and command these spirits to go into the cage and cut the people free from them. Now take deep breaths and just cough them out in Jesus' name. We take authority over all of the lake spirits. Now this devil inhabits the clear waters of the lake. The hook is not used for fishing in such lakes, and people do not normally fish in it without permission of the demon. It's a very proud demon and manifests all respect like crystal demons. Lake mariners or lake marines also have royal marines that bear titles such as prince and princess. They all wear uh, different types of stones on their bodies. They uh, de deposit stars, diamonds, crystals in their victims. In most stubborn and seductive marines, its victims are normally beautiful and have intense sexual appeal. 
they manifest mostly as pure fish wearing ornaments, big fishes, and also manifest mostly as dark skinned beauties. Thou she though she may though she may attack a few fair ones, but she puts necklaces on her victims' eyes. So today we cut the necklaces and the yokes off of the people in Jesus' name. We break the power of the prince and the princes of the like marine spirits in Jesus' name. We command all of their fake diamonds, uh, crystals, uh, from there and their precious stones and command those to go into the cage. We don't want anything that you have. And we command all of your intense sexual appeals to be broken over our lives. And we command you all to go into the cage. Lake Marine, we break you and command you to leave instantly and immediately right now in Jesus' name. Now, take some deep breaths and cough those out. Now, <laughs> let me say that when you go into these false religious movements of uh, of uh, Peter Wagner and all of these uh, third way people, uh, Todd Bentley, they have uh, angels that come into their meetings and they distribute pride. They distribute jewelry. They distribute uh, uh, diamonds, uh, gold dust, and things like that. This is the spirit that's doing that. It is not coming from the throne of God. So if you've ever been in one of these meetings and you've picked up gold dust and you've picked up jewelry or jewels or anything like that, my suggestion is throw them away and break the power of that seduction over your life. And many, many American Christians have these spirits. So what I'm going to do is, you know, I went in one of those meetings to discern what was going on in there. And I'm going to take a deep breath and make sure I don't have this Lake Marine spirit too. So what I would suggest all of us do at this point, take a deep breath and just cough them out. In the name of Jesus, Kundalini, Python, Boa, we cut your tails off, marine spirits of all natures. We command you all that we've talked about to get into the cage right now. Feather spirits, gold teeth spirits, yes. All of these false movements, gold dust spirits, we break your powers right now. Take deep coughs. <laughs> Make sure they're gone. Go to the feet of Jesus, all of you, in Jesus' name. Now, there's another spirit that I'm going to go on. I see Shannon's up there telling you some names, too. So you get in agreement with both of us because he's typing them in as I'm call teaching you and calling these out. Lagoon Marine, it manifests in every aspect like a, like a lake demon but it entertains mixed societies, whereas the lake demon is very selective. Unlike, uh, unlike this is the lagoon demon that we're handling. Unlike the lake demon, it does not mind dirt and water and permits paddles and allows dead fish to rot in the water as the lake demon will chase them out. So it's a dirty devil, too, this lagoon spirit. So we break the power of the lagoon spirit over you, and we command you to get out and go. Just take a deep breath and let them go in the name of Jesus right now. The deliverance from marine spirits, these testimonies uh, that I've just shared with you concerning these various um, demons, I got these testimonies from several different African men that I've uh, ministered with over the years, and they are Bishop Henry Salalu in Aja, Lagos, Nigeria, 
And Bishop Salalu has a very large church in Nigeria and a very powerful deliverance ministry. And these testimonies come from a magazine that he publishes. And, of course, y'all are all familiar with um, with um, Bishop Kenko. Now, Bishop Kenko, uh, they uh, and other ministers, I've, I've had other Africans uh, to come and tell me about these things, tell you about deliverance from spiritual husbands and spiritual wives. Now, I want to talk to you about this for just a moment. These spirits come to you in dreams. Uh, Americans call them wet dreams. And these spirits attach themselves to you, and they become married to you. They become your spiritual wife or husband. And then what what happens to you is you never can find a wife or a husband. If you do find somebody, then that spiritual wife or husband will fight against you within your marriage. Uh, they'll cause divorces. They'll cause one to be sexually cold, the other one to be sexually hot. Um, the uh, Africans talk about children being born between these sexual demons and the whites. I don't understand it all. It could be that they collect the sperm and inject it into the woman because my Bible says that angels cannot have babies, but they do over there describe women having babies from these uh, spiritual things. And sometimes these babies are deformed. And um, so anyway, uh, Bishop uh, Salalu uh, writes a testimony concerning a woman with a spiritual husband. She says, I was possessed, and this spiritual husband destroyed my wealth, got me afflicted, my legs were swollen, I became heavy and uncomfortable. But when the deliverance team and the bishop prayed for me, I became delivered, my uh, swollen legs went down. I thank God it's well with me today. Praise God. And so uh, that is a woman. And you find this. I mean, they would come up when I was ministering, even over in Italy. I had some of them to come up and say, I have a spiritual husband. You might not call it a spiritual husband in America or a spiritual wife. But yet, you've got a supernatural being coming in your room at night having sexual uh, sexual uh, affairs with you. That is a spiritual husband or a spiritual wife. And so what I'm going to have you to do, I can tell you some more uh, testimonies after we get rid of these spirits. But what I'm going to tell you to do right now is I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to separate me from this marine spirit that comes to me in my dreams and has sex with me. Sometimes they just come into the room and you're wide awake. Say, I renounce this spiritual link to my life. I cut its garlands or its cords. I break the ley lines to the sea and the lakes and the lagoons to where these spirits are coming from in the name of Jesus. And I command these devils right now in Jesus' name to leave me. Now you take a deep, deep Breath. And I see Omega Man is hidden. Incubus, Succubus, Asmodeus, Osmodeus, Lilith, and uh, spirit husbands and wives. Now, Lilith is a very powerful spirit that attacks men. 
and uh, it's a sexual spirit also. It's a magical. It leads uh, people into what um, I wrote a book called Magical Sex. And so um, I want the men to renounce uh, wet dreams, uh, spirits coming in, masturbation, all uh, spirits that are not normal. And uh, now in the name of Jesus, we take authority over these spirits, and we command you to leave right now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we bind these spirits over Buck Wiles tonight again as we pray for the people in Jesus' name. Yes, these spirits can come through pornography, and pornography is a very, very powerful spirit. And particularly in today, and because of television and movies and porno flicks and uh, all kinds of uh, gay bars and uh, girly topless bars and all of these things, uh, comedy uh, strips that you so readily run towards and uh, all of these devils that you have collected over the over the years in the name of Jesus. And we bind all of these spirits and buck in the name of Jesus. And we all agree that these spirits are disconnected from him, and we send them into a cage. As we send all of these pornography spirits and all of these devils that we've been discussing in a cage, we cut all of their cords and their roots, and we command them. The spirits of homosexuality, lesbianism, sexual deviancy, we bind you in one accord. We're in agreement. All filthy, accursed devils that have taken over our minds. We bind you up in the name of Jesus. Now, um, Omega Man is writing some uh, spirits in there, and you watch him, and I'm going to tell you a few more testimonies. Uh, we bind these spirits and command them to go, come out. Take deep breaths and let them out in the name of Jesus. Deep breaths, that's right. Let them go. Let them go instantly, instantly, instantly. Death and destruction. And Omega, there's some spirits that cause um, these diseases. Can you think of some of those to write down? Like um, syphilis. Uh, I've seen the Lord heal syphilis, by the way. I prayed for a lady many years ago, probably 20 years ago, and she still healed from syphilis. She was, um, I prayed for her over in the mental hospital, and she still healed. I prayed for numerous people that have had AIDS. And um, what are those little sores that come on you? Um, see, I... Uh, it's been so long since I've been out in the world, so some of these things I don't know. S T Z D demons, herpes, that's the one. We bind those up. We bind HPV up. All of these devils that they're writing down now, we bind them. We command them to go into a cage right now. Now, if you've ever had sex, with somebody aside from the woman or the man that you're married to, some of these spirits can languish around in your body and later on in years come back on you and cause these things to uh, develop into uh, sores, so staph diseases, all of these things. And uh, so what happens Whenever those those things happen to you, you go to the doctor, it gives you penicillin, and some of these things keep coming back, MRSA diseases. And some of these things, uh, uh, medicines don't cure because they're devils. So my suggestion to you is take authority today over those sexual devils and the result of those devils that they have done to your body. Also, you can take authority over any eggs of uh, germs 
you see a lot of spirits are just little germs that you can't even see with your eyes. And you take authority over those uh, eggs that they've laid in your body uh, to be released later on so that you can get these little sores or this little thing to happen to you. Uh, here's some more. Uh, methicillin, uh, um, that's resistance to staph. So uh, we take authority over all of these that they're calling out now on the uh, web page, on the chat room, and we command them to go into the cage. We command all of their seeds and eggs to die in the name of Jesus in our bodies. Now, one of the spirits that come in women is um, these spirits of... Um, cancer in the breast and cancer in the uh, uterus and the men probably get them down I forget the name of that place where they um, where they come but they come down below and you get cancer Prostate there prostate cancer yeah that uh, uh, they, they come in the name of cancer the scientists agree that women that have had abortions that they're more likely to get breast cancer and cancer in the uterus. And women that have sex with a lot of different partners, uh, usually, according to the scientists now, uh, that they get cancer in the uterus. So, ladies and men, let's break these cancer spirits over us today in our ovaries you know, and our that? sexual. Yes. One of the uh, the curses that God puts on men and women is having sex during menstruation week. And that's and the that cause of too. a lot of these. It's a generational curse. We break that, too. So let's take authority right now and say, I break all of these cancer spirits, all of these generational curses coming down from my family, over my breast, my sexual organs, my prostate, my uh, phallic. Uh, whatever, <coughs> must have had one of those myself, in the name of Jesus. And listen, folks, I haven't had sex in probably 25 years. So if something just left me after 25 years, I know some of you are coughing right now. Amen, Amiga Man. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're here to get you set free in Jesus' name tonight. Uh, but that is true. Uh, we bring a lot of curses on ourselves, folks, for just disobeying the Word of God. It's very clear. There's certain things we're not to do, and when we do it, it can bring a, a curse in our head. So let's repent tonight and uh, get in line with the Word of God. Uh, let me give you another testimony while you're breathing and coughing out and people are writing the spirits down up there. Uh, also, by the way, uh, eyes. Lust of the eyes and lust of the ears. That's lusting to look after these pornography things and ask God to erase all of those uh, detestable things from your memory banks and from your mind. Because every time you see something, it makes an indelible picture on your mind that's there forever. So wash your minds. Uh, with the blood of Jesus. We break all of the choking spirits in the name of Jesus. We command those choking spirits to loose the throats of the people, and you come out instantly and immediately, and the angels of God uh, deliver the people. You know who they are that need assistance right now in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to give you a testimony. Omega Man will continue what he's doing. He'll also be challenging spirits up there, as I talked to you about, um, from um, Salalu. He says, uh, this woman came to him, and he says, my prayer partner is MAME, M-A-A-M-E, Water Agents. Now, both Kanko and the other African people have told me that whenever a witch or a wizard, a human being, is connected and infected with these water spirits, they're sent up by Satan to 
pollute uh, Christians and the people in the churches, and those people are called agents, water agents. So the testimony is a woman called Grace, 19, thought that she could play the Good Samaritan and perhaps find a lasting solution to her inability to find a prayer partner by sharing her room with a newfound friend. Ironically, this humanitarian gesture gesture was required with separation from her husband, a vet. Grace found Josephine, the suspect, a new convert in the church, becoming acquaintances after a Sunday service. After three, uh, uh, Josephine uh, told Grace that her aunt had ejected her from her home. Grace invited her to move in. She became my prayer partner. Grace said, my marriage and foodstuff business began to, uh, to assume negative dimensions after chumming with her for one month. Grace said, the astonishing thing is my room began to abode with snakes, lizards, and red ants. She went to a survival or revival service, and a man of God told her that her prayer partner is an agent or a MAME water, M-A-A-M-E water, a marine in the sea. Grace received deliverance, and her life turned around. And so now... What's going on in your life as far as your business, your income, uh, as far as your health, and as far as your family? Have they? Have you been infected through a marine agent that has been sent to work powers against you and your family and your business and your finances? Well, let's just take agreement over this right now. We break the powers over your life and all of the generational curses. We put the blood of Jesus between you and any marine spirits. And remember, the water agent comes into churches to pollute Christians. You may, they may have come in and you didn't even know. So we break those powers right now and we send them into the cage. Now take a deep breath and breathe them out right now. Take a deep breath. (coughs) Just like that. All the way down from the stomach and cough them out in the name of Jesus. And, yes, anybody that's in any fear, i got to tell you that fear is not from God. The Bible says, for I have not given you a spirit of fear, but that of love, power, and a sound mind. And so we release that scripture over you. Now, fear is a gatekeeper in the mind. It comes through trauma. We break the power of trauma. Fear opens up the door. Uh, for other spirits to come in, so it becomes the gatekeeper. So if you're in fear, we break the power of fear and its power to keep your doors closed, to keep you blocked from receiving power of deliverance today, and we command it to leave instantly, right now. Take a deep cough and cough it out. That's right. Get rid of it instantly. Amen, in Jesus' name. Now, Bishop Kanko from Ghana, West Africa, was born into witchcraft. His daddy began to uh, train him. And uh, I know that many of you will never believe his testimony concerning the city under the sea, but it's a true testimony. And I've heard this testimony, this type of a testimony, from other Africans from different parts of Africa 
I've even pulled up testimonies from people from Scotland, people from Canada, and from other parts of the world that have been attached to these marine spirits. Uh, people down in the Caribbean, uh, a lot of times they have testimonies concerning these things. These are real demonic forces. These are not things that you find in the Wizard of Oz and Disney World. Oh, I forgot, you do find them there, but they're told to you as just stories or fairy stories. Uh, these stories come from minds that understand witchcraft and demonology. A lot of you would be surprised that Walt Disney knew an awful lot about witchcraft and demonology. I remember going to see Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, for instance. When I went over to Africa, a man uh, made an appointment with me and came uh, to me, and I ministered to him. And his problem was he was a pastor. And he told me, he said, these ugly, and Bishop Kansuko says that the forest devils are the ugliest devils alive. And he said, these dwarf devils are following me. My father was a pastor. I'm a pastor. And I can't get rid of them. Well, I took authority over the dwarf spirits that did deliverance on him, and he got rid of them. And so uh, he was a pastor, but these spirits were following him. And what they were probably doing is they were waiting for him to open a gate of sin somehow so that they could take him over. And that's how devils come into Christian is through sin. So we break the power of the dwarf spirits, and those are the powers from the earth. We break those spirits and command every one of them to leave in the name of Jesus. And we give you the praise and the glory. Now, in these sea spirits, you have a spirit called sea beasts. And the Bible says in Revelation 5.13, And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all of them heard I say, Blessings and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth on the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Now, if you examine those scriptures very closely, you will see that this message concerning Jesus' authority and high position over all of these uh, spirits that we've been calling out tonight is superior and sufficient for us, that these devils have to get into subjection to us so that they have to leave when we command them to leave. Now, there are spirits called sea behemoths. And the Bible describes these over in Isaiah 27, verse 1. And the Bible shows the sea monsters or demons that appear as great mystifying beings that five under the sea, that excuse me, that live under the sea. And the Bible describes this spirit as Leviathan, king of the sea. Leviathan is king of the sea. And you see it in that day, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, a piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. So the Bible shows these spirits that we're talking to you about tonight. It's not just something that we hear and make up. This is biblical teaching here tonight. And understand that Satan knows that he's already defeated. And he recognized that Christians lack knowledge, according to Hosea 4.6. 
I tell you that he knows it. He knows these things. And that's why he's so overcoming in the church systems, and he's so overcoming in Christians' lives today because he's able to take advantage of their ignorance. He works freely in many churches because only a few are able to discern his works, and hardly any people that call themselves Christians even believe these things that we're talking to you about tonight. You need to call these tapes down, and you need to make copies, and you need to take them to your pastor and say, I'm praying for you, pastor. Listen to this. I know you don't want to hear it, but listen to it anyway. And give them out to your Christian friends. Look, become little evangelists in the church so that Jesus can have the harvest that he's yearning for. He shed his blood for these people. And as long as they're behind the bars of blindness and doubt and unbelief, they cannot know unless you send a preacher to tell them. So you become little preachers and help us to get the word out. We're putting it out for you. Take these tapes and give them around. Now, as a matter of fact, many of these mysteries in the sea Uh, also serves many purposes. The Bible says that the sea monsters are real, that there are entities under the sea that shape, shift, that means to change from one form into another form, and they have physical appearances such as monsters, grotesque mutations, and look like prehistoric creatures. At the same time, you have witches and wizards that shape shift, and and the devil allows those people to turn into demonic beings, or they can turn into they can turn into animals, uh, things like that. Different uh, in the book Witch Doctor and the Man, uh, Bishop Witch. Uh, Bishop uh, Kenko talks about turning into five different beasts uh, and uh, murdering uh, people in the forms of uh, crocodiles and whatever. you got to get that book. Go up on uh, Shannon's webpage, omegaman.com, patholiday.com, uh, Miracle internetchurch.com and you'll find that book and you can order that book in soft book uh, from uh, Amazon. So therefore, the Bible tells us that the sea holds supernatural creatures. The word dragon is uh, a common Hebrew word for a large sea serpent. The word refers to Leviathan in Isaiah 27.1, and Rahab as an Egypt in as Egypt in Isaiah 1.9, the word dragon occurs 14 times in the Old Testament, and is translated as a sea monster, sea serpent, or a dragon, and it, it refers to any large sea or marine creature that uh, is uh, monstrous or hideous, good or bad, including sea monsters. God created in Genesis 1.21, the smaller creatures of the sea are called living creatures and fish in Genesis 1.21 through uh, uh, and uh, chapter 16. The, the Bible says, quote, there is a sea great and broad in which are swarms without numbers, animals, small and great. And Leviathan, thou hast formed to sport in it. In Psalms 104, 25, 26. And see also Job, Three eight. In the last days, the Lord will destroy Leviathan, 
who lives in the sea in Isaiah 27.1. In that day, uh, usually means to Bible scholars the last uh, times or the end times. Now, the Leviathan spirit is described as a frightening monster of the high seas in Job 41. He's called Leviathan. His name occurs five times in the Old Testament and always as an evil entity allied with a Satan. The, this, the, this spirit is called the king of the sea. Now, Rahab is another demonic inhabitant. Rahab is described as the fleeing serpent. So you see, Leviathan and Rahab are two different spirits. They're two different kinds of uh, snakes. Uh, Rahab is the fleeing serpent or the flying serpent in Job 26, 12, 13. And in Job uh, 6, it says, abyss is under the sea. It is likened to Egypt whose army was drowned in the Red Sea. And God's people at that time was more powerful, therefore overcoming and crushing these evil entities over those waters. So Rahab is a demon. And, of course, you can find uh, descriptions of uh, Rahab in uh, secular writings. Uh, you can find her in Jewish folklore. Uh, folklore. Uh, she's called a sea demon, a dragon of the waters, the ruler of the sea. Rahab is a very powerful principality and power. And also connected to her are are uh, spirits that are called guardian angels of Egypt. And these angels are called Biel, Masternama, and that's M-A-S-T-E-M-A, Shemiel, and that is S-A-M-A-E-L, and Uzziah, U-Z-Z-A. And so uh, we bind all of these Rahab and Leviathan and dragon spirits, and we cut their heads off, their tails off, their fins off, their scales off, and we command them to go into a cage right now. And we command all of you to come out, plus the ones that... Um, that Omega Man is dealing with up on the chat room right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Now take some deep breaths and just let them blow out. Let them blow out. Let them blow out into the cage. You come out and you go to the feet of Jesus to be tormented before your time instantly and immediately. And the angels are standing right in front of you. And they are bringing these devils to the throne of Jesus right now. Now, Rahab also originally uh, designated the primordial abyss, the water dragon of the darkness of chaos. And it's comparable to Leviathan. And here's a new demon for you. T-I-A-M-A-T, Tama. And Rahab later became peculiar demon, an inhabitant in the sea, especially in the Red Sea, and is shown sometimes associating with Leviathan. Now, the difference between Le uh, Rahab and Tannin, T-A-N-N-I-N, -N -N, is unclear. And these two spirits are associated together in Jewish um, literature. Uh, the, um, the name 
was also applied to Egypt and the destruction of the Pharaoh after the exodus of the Israelites in uh, Jewish literature. And so Isaiah 51, 9 through 11, where Rahab is connected to the sea serpent, dragon, in the King James Version. In this passage, the destruction of the Egyptians through the drying parting of the water is compared to the myth of the destruction of T-I-A-M-A-T, Tamat, in the creation of the world. And so, therefore, we are dealing here with very powerful spirits that are gatekeepers and their people uh, are their spirits up underneath the sea. You can find these sea serpents, uh, for instance, to pat, to, uh, T-A-I-M, to Matt. Uh, you can find her uh, as a mother goddess in Babylon, in Samaria, uh, mythological stories, in um, Judeo-Christian uh, cultures, and she was later construed as an evil monster. And so we bind these spirits up. The dragon spirit, to Matt, is also known as the multiple headed dragon, and we cut her heads off. Uh, she is known in the 70s as a fixture. Now get this. In the Dungeons and Dragons role-playing games. Now, if any of you have ever played with Dungeons and Dragons, you need to renounce that right now and ask Jesus to deliver you. And you need to say, Lord, I renounce Dungeons and Dragons and all computer games that are connected with these evil spirits in the name of Jesus. I ask you to set me free from them. I command these devils to go into a cage, and I command them to leave me now instantly, immediately. Now take a deep, deep cough. And one of the demons that were involved in this Dungeons & Dragons game was named Lotan. And we bind up Lotan and command that spirit to go. Now, these things are real, friends. They're made up as games, but what they do is that they um, they come in whenever you give your child a Harry Potter book or a computer game, even some of these Christian games that uh, are warfare games between good and evil where your kid is given a sword and he fights the monsters and they put them in Christian stores. These things are real, and you invite them into your children and into your house, and the children become demon-possessed. I remember I was ministering in a church over in another section of the city, and this little boy came up to the altar, and he asked for prayer. And what he went home, and he came back, and he said, I had to come back and tell you this. He said, I have Dungeons & Dragons uh, game in my house. And he said, my dad came over. And he said, son, this is of the devil. And he said, he threw the game out. And when he threw the game out, he said, I saw this little tin man come out of the game and he came in to me and I've been afraid ever since and I cast that little tin man spirit out of that little boy and he was instantly set free so we're talking to people that don't understand deliverance and the fact that what they do is going to have an effect over their lives if you go into a whorehouse you're going to come out with sexual devils and you're going to come out with lust devils and all kinds of spirits. 
What we're saying is you have to guard your vessel after these deliverances. You can't live loose lives after deliverance. Amen? And so now this Rahab spirit is also listed in the Tamald uh, and the Old Testament, and it's given as noise. And we would know that as tumult and arrogance. Uh, also, uh, uh, there's a, a man that wrote about uh, tumult. I'm not going to give all the names because of time. Uh, and he said uh, he called it a, dungeon, a dragon serpent. And they are included among the larger and general list of monsters, now get this, including including scorpion men and mer people. Now, what is a mer people? I've uh, had uh, Africans and also people from the Caribbean talk to me about mermaids. Remember the little mermaid that Walt Disney put out? And mer people, the mermaids are the female spirit, and then the mer people are the he uh, mer he he men are the men uh, mermaid spirit, and these are spirit that take the form of these uh, people that we know as mythological mermaids and so on and so forth, and so these particular spirits. Uh, have power. Now, you can remember when some of the men that used to sail the seas and write stories about it, they t they would have a mermaid a lot of times on the hull of their ship to guide their ships from one port to the other to safety. And some of them describe seeing these mermaids and these he-men play playing in the waters that they would ride through. So a lot of times the myths that we've heard about are nothing but people being able to see into the spiritual realms and the spiritual world. And so that's my um, – that's a teaching that I've done on these marine spirits today. And um, I think last week we talked about Leviathan a lot. So these two uh, spirit, these two teachings that we've done up on the on uh, Omega Man sort of dovetail together, and uh, you may uh, now Shannon they were asking are mermaids such as hybrids? What is that word that you use all the time that where the it's the only, animals? Uh, chimera? Yeah, type that in. Is type that in so that they can see that word. Uh, that that word is when humans mix with animals. Now, whether they can humanly come out looking like an animal, so over in Africa they claim they can. Over here, I've never heard anybody say that, but uh, in Africa, I had a woman uh, to uh, say that. Uh, wanted uh, the minister to come to her house because she claimed that a wizard or a witch had turned her husband into a goat and and she had tied him up behind the house. Well, was that a spiritual, really her husband? Or was was it something she imagined? Or was that a real goat? Now, friends, I can hardly wait to be able to get... Uh, Bishop Kenko to come up and speak to you. One of the problems that's going on with Bishop Kenko, you know, they they live in an area that's very, very poor. Uh, the Muslims have all the money over there because the people that have the oil wells have poured money into Africa to create uh, the Muslim religion over there. And uh, the Christians over there are very poor people. There are some wealthy Christians over there, uh, but um, 
I don't think that they go to Canco's church, from what I saw anyway. Uh, but um, one of the problems he's having is he needs a sponsor to sponsor an Internet for him and also to pay for Skype. If we can get an inter, uh, pay for an internet connection for Bishop Canco and a Skype, then we could have him regularly to come in on these radio shows. And hey, uh, he, knows, he knows so much more than I do about these things and uh, anybody else that I know because he lived with these beings. He can describe what they look like, what they walk, and what they do far more than what I can. So if you want to um, do something so that we can uh, get uh, Bishop Kenko Skype and pay for him to have an Internet connection over in um, Ghana, uh, you contact Omega Man and let him know, and... Uh, uh, we'll try to gather enough together so that we can do that. He says it's very expensive over there. I imagine Omega Man can look it up and find out what it's all about later and let you know. But if you want to give something so depending to on his uh, location, he may have to have what's called satellite internet. Yeah, which is very expensive. But you can Man, check that out, Ken, uh, Ken Co. I mean. Uh, Omega Man, uh, he's got a lot to teach. He's got a lot to say uh, about these things. Um, they know a lot. Evelyn, his wife, has uh, formulated uh, 600 churches or more over there in Africa. She's a former Muslim, and uh, she's very powerful in her own right. When she met Kanko, she was totally blind. She was a princess. Her father was uh, uh, the chief of a village over there, and she was going to college. And some of the Christians said, there's a man in the city that's visiting for the full gospel businessmen over at the hotel. If you come, we believe that God will open up your eyes to see. They took her over to the hotel uh, Canco ministered to her, cast the demons of Muslims and all that stuff out of her. She got her eyesight back, and the Lord spoke to Canco and said, this is going to be your wife. Uh, they got married. They have three children. One of the children is a girl that's studying to be an MD as I speak to you today. And so um, uh, just be praying about uh given money for his Skype so that we can get him on American uh, radio with us because he's got – I have a lot to teach, but he has a lot to teach too is what I'm telling you. So uh, yeah, you contact – Yeah, him on, uh, Dr. Pat. Yes, he comes That's to cool. America, but he doesn't come very often. Well, Dr. Go ahead, Pat, we've got about uh, two minutes remaining. Go ahead and uh, give out your contact information again, please. My contact information is patholiday.com and also miracleinternetchurch.com, uh, omegaradio.com, remnantradio.org, and you can find me up on Skype. You can find a lot of my articles up there, too, and that's uh, Skype dot com Pat Holiday, I think. But um I'm all over the place. If you're looking for me, just type my name in the search engines and you'll find just scads of information about me. Well Doctor Pat, God bless you. I want to thank you for coming on tonight. I'm sorry we had some technical difficulties. Oh wait, first we need to fill Oops. those people. Ask the Holy Ghost to yeah. come in and fill you right now with this Holy Ghost and get under the Word of God, and fill yourself with the Word of God and stay in contact with us. Go ahead. Amen. Um, yes, we bind and cage any remaining foul spirits in the people. We command them to be bound and gagged till they come up and manifest in deliverance. We ask God that 
You would fill the people with the Holy Spirit right now, fill all the voids in Jesus' name. Uh huh. Well, Doctor Pat, God bless you for coming on tonight, and well, we'll thank see you, you Shannon. Night. You're doing a wonderful job, folks. That was uh, Doctor Pat. Tomorrow night will be the school intercessory worker prayer at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Join with us. Um, look forward to having you here tomorrow night. God bless everyone out there. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Thank you for listening to Omega Man Radio. Our mission is to operate in the threefold ministry of Jesus Christ and take evangelism, deliverance from demons, and miracle healing to the world. If you would like to partner with us, you can support this work by donating any amount online at OmegaManRadio.com. Join us in an all-out attack against the hosts of hell. It's time to deliver a death blow to the enemy and take back territory for Jesus. Tell a friend and support Omega Man Radio. And I said before, if you want to find a lot of demons, go to church. There you can be sure you'll find a bunch. They're roosting all over God's people. They're binding them down. They're choking them off. And somebody has to care because people are bound. And if it isn't the chosen of God, I don't know who's going to care. If it isn't those whom God has called out, if they don't care enough to lay their lives on the line, I don't know who's going to do it. As the sad scripture says, I looked for a man and I found none. God looked for a man. He couldn't find anybody. Everybody was doing their own thing. God is calling a people to war, all out war. A war in which no quarter is given and no quarter is asked. The order of the day remains attack, attack, attack. That's God's marching order.